Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, approximately noon, so it's not morning anymore, but I hope you guys are having a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. I hope you guys are excited about the holidays. I know generally around this time we are feeling pretty jolly, but um, it's difficult to feel that way, but I would ask all of you to try. Let's try to stay positive and healthy. We're going to get through this. So today I want to talk about um, a specific topic that uh, I've talked about before, uh, specifically magic mushrooms. There's a growing interest, as I'm about to show you this uh, collection of articles, um, and there's quite a few of them. Uh, most of the interest these days aren't from like us, people who are trying to deal with their depression, anxieties, fears, uncertainties, trying to discover ourselves um, in this world. No, it's mostly the interest comes from uh, VCs, uh, fairly large uh, investment groups, and um, you know investors. That's really that's really the the main interest. Of course, there's researchers too which is uh, a great sign. Many states are starting to open up and decriminalize, like Oregon just uh, decriminalized a bunch of different drugs, uh, some good, some bad. Ultimately, most of the world is still uh, against um, a lot of different drugs. Magic mushrooms is one of them. It's not on the list of things to be de uh, decriminalized globally, but uh, who knows, it may be, depending on how the research turns out. Uh, it is a profit-motivated uh, project, it usually is, but um, that's really because of the obvious, which is that it is helping people. The research is showing that it is helping people. Uh, it's dear to me because I have used it to grow as an individual, to identify my pains, to um, to uh, and to address them in a positive way, so that I can grow and um, and overcome them. I have used them for a number of years. I continue to do so. It's not like problems just disappear overnight. Um, no two people really experience it the same way, and it really depends on your purpose. I have made videos about this if you guys want to go check it out, but uh, your purpose of using it is important. It's not, in my opinion, uh, cannabis and magic mushrooms are wrongfully categorized for partying. For the many years I've used uh, cannabis, I can say that uh, it's a great tool for self-reflection. When I look at uh, the mushrooms, it's a great tool to identify your pains so that you can better understand them and deal with them. Uh, both useful, in my opinion, incredibly powerful tools. Uh, far, far better than um, taking prescribed medications that uh, just mask the problems. You're, you're not addressing them, you're masking them. And that's why I didn't go down that route. I mean, I was really, uh, I was really not feeling great uh, around 2018. I was really uh, falling apart emotionally. And I can I can say that because I've overcome them for the most part and continue to work on it. That's uh, that's part of this journey of life is that uh, it's not over. We have approximately 100 years of living. Uh, how do we want to uh, live it exactly? So let's dive into it. Let me show you some of these uh, articles that um, I have been following. Some of them are recent, some of them are from months ago, uh, but all of them from this year specifically. Uh, there's many different media giants that cover it. These are from Bloomberg just covering the business portion of it, the, uh, the business interest in all of this. So from what I've seen and I have read some of these, they're uh, there's interest because nobody wants to miss out like they did in cannabis. As cannabis exploded, and as you can see from like these charts, uh, Canopy Growth is a cannabis company out of Canada. On their uh, day of uh, opening up in the stock market, the volumes were insane. And people want that access. The investors want access to that before those types of volumes come in because uh, large institutions aren't in it yet. So when they do come in, you're going to see volumes just like this one. Prices spiking up and then a giant crash because uh, that's how the game works. So let's dive into it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are to some of these search results. As you can see here, look at that. That's 14,000 results. There's uh, so much news on it. Uh, CEOs getting involved. That's two weeks ago. Other companies getting involved. Who is this? My Mind Med leading this uh, recent surge in psychedelic stocks. Incredible. Psychedelics replace pot as the new favorite edgy investment. Uh, that is what I discovered about a week ago. 
that uh, specifically that I had read, and that's uh, what I had what I had seen is that uh, they're really just um, interested in making sure they're not missing out on a great investment opportunity. A bet on magic mushrooms made one investor three hundred sixteen million dollars. What does this say? Seeking U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval to use its formulation of psilocybin. Uh, key word right there, formulation. You know, it's a. That's what I fear is that you have all of these interests and uh, certain government regulations that really. Um, well, I want to say that really just force companies to formulate something, so that way they can patent and sell it. Uh, so that they can provide uh, that uh, transparency that it is, in fact, safe. It's been researched. Um, but whatever they end up doing, I know that um, it's hardly ever in our benefit and mostly in their benefit. I see a direct you know, mirroring. I experienced the cannabis industry you know, uh, from the beginning. Uh, when it was medical, and it was so much better. When I review the laws, I see that we had way better laws for the medical use versus the recreational. With recreational, you know, we know who the winners are, and it did hurt a lot of people, a lot of people who started early on in that industry. And uh, when, I see, when I say mirroring, I see that in a very similar way happening to this new emerging industry as they continue to decriminalize and research and try to see how it can help people. Like I said, a lot of us who use this, we use it for depression, anxiety, stress, um, self-discovery, uh, dealing with our fears, our uncertainties, our, um, our shortcomings, and we try to use it to understand ourselves better and grow from it. Um, I don't know if that's um, th that whatever they will formulate will encompass all those things. Um, when it, I know from experience, looking at science and how we've always uh, kind of developed products, uh, it's always been where when you try to duplicate something that nature does, it, um, it unfortunately falls short. That's what I have seen. There might be some out there that, um, that don't, uh, but uh, that's kind of what I expect here. If we try to formulate something with psilocybin that, uh, that is considered FDA safe uh, and might come in capsule form or beverage form or whatever, I d don't believe it's going to have the same type of um, effects uh, like uh, encompassing all those things I mentioned. It, like whatever they make might help with depression can't deny it but can it do all those other things that um, that uh, I described I, ha I did a I did a video about my own microdosing experiences going back and someone left a comment saying that um, it felt like as they continue to take them that it was sh like they were shedding this veil um, that's been clouding their life and another person mentioned that uh, the mushrooms actually do something very similar as they grow and mature. And they're doing it to our own brain as well when we take them. It's fascinating. Uh, so that's what I mean by encompassing the entire experience, is that they might be successful in dealing with one or two things, um, but whatever they develop, it's not going to be like what we're used to. We'll eat caps and stems. You know, this is something that's grown, whereas they're going to go ahead and find ways to take certain chemical attributes and put them into a capsule or a beverage or something of that nature. Uh, so it'll be really different. It'll be, you know, highly manipulated for sure, just like the cannabis we see today. Cannabis today is not like what it was 10 years ago. Um, and I don't mean that necessarily in a negative, but um, it's not really positive either. Uh, with all the manipulation that goes on with cannabis growth, we see less and less cannabinoids like the CBD and the CBN, which promotes sleep. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's less and less in all the flour that is out there now. It's just THC designed to get you high only, which will have its own impacts, um, positive and negative ones, right? It's making a ton of money, but the negative effects on the human brain, uh, we don't really understand well enough when you bump THC levels, you know, 25, 30, 40, 90% for concentrates. Like it's crazy to think about, uh, but they're allowing it because there's a lot of money to be made. Um, on the flip side, you know, the pharmaceutical industry is a $70 trillion industry, and all of these investors are looking 
to be part of that disruption. They want a piece of that. And th- we're seeing that these things do work. It's People are talking about it. It's great that, you know, 30 years ago, if I was talking about my experiences, uh, there would be no way I'd be just uh, ignored. Um, I would either get into trouble, legal trouble, something. These days, we're all sharing these experiences and people are discovering it. Uh, that's why it's so important to me to uh, to talk about it, that um, that people understand, like, you don't necessarily have to buy whatever is being prescribed or being developed. If you can find a way to grow it or go to cultivators, that's the best thing to do. Like I said, in the cannabis industry, a lot of cultivators, a lot of people from the beginning got hurt with these recreational laws. Um, they were, you know, they were able to participate, and then all of a sudden, they're not allowed to participate because uh, they don't meet certain standards that were just established at that very point. Um, and um, you know, the weed we get now in stores, though it's very strong, it's not what I'm looking for. So I use, you know, cultivators, private ones. The same goes for like the mushrooms. You could eventually buy them maybe maybe they'll be prescribed and you can't just get them over the counter that's kind of crazy too to think about because um like i said it just grows um we'll see what do you guys think as you can see i am very passionate about this it's important to me um it has helped me change my life for the better and it continues to i continue to use them it's not like my problems have disappeared they you know every year there's a new Uh, hurdle a new uh, challenge and what it has helped me do is really learn about myself when it comes to these challenges challenges are to be overcome not to be succumbed to because tomorrow will bring new obstacles i'll catch you guys on the next one